I'm recording. All right, start off with, we'll go for raw water system in that case then. Yeah. So, very simple, I don't know how much you know of the raw water system or not. And just that it Seacock, brings it, yeah, that's yes, pretty much yes. It. So, yeah. Seacock's open. Yeah. From the Seacock to your strainer basket. Yeah. Strainer baskets are very important, obviously, sucking in seaweed or jellyfish. Yeah, or so that's the thing you have to check first. Exactly, off. just a basic, yeah. basic, basic filter. Yeah. And it's a great point of view if your engine's just started to open up the hatch and have a quick peek and see yeah. if there's water circulating. Yeah. Although you see water splashing at the back, it's sometimes worth just having a quick peek in there. Yeah. They do a thing called wobble that you've got to check. I have heard about wobble. wobble yep. yeah. <laughs> I've heard a few customers talk about this. It's pretty good though. Yeah, anything that makes you check things. <laughs> From the strainer basket, it actually goes to the gearbox first. Yeah. So it's, this is all on the vacuum side. So this, right. is, this is the pump basically that's creating the pressure through the engine, but everything on this side of it is vacuum. Yeah. Starting from here. So strainer basket from here to your gearbox. Yeah. It goes through your gearbox through a coil of copper. Yeah. To cool the gearbox oil. From there, it comes along this pipe from the yeah. gearbox into the pump. Yeah. Now these little pumps are something of their own, worth keeping their eye, keeping your eye on as well. If Is you that ever... something you can take out and replace if... Yeah, it's a piece of cake to replace or rebuild actually. Um, but yeah, there's a definitely. whole load of O-rings and little uh, square um, O-rings that sit in there as well. So okay. square edged O-rings that slot into all of these little spaces that can cause weepage or leaking. Right. There's Did you notice anything leaking? Nothing on the raw water pump at all. Okay, no. that's good. There's two Just... lip seals in here. Yep. Um, one to stop engine oil because this has been driven from the engine. So yep. the actual crank gear is driving this little pump. Yep. Um, so there's a, a lip seal to stop oil coming out the way and yep. there's a little lip seal to stop water going in the oh, way no, as well. Is that something that could wear? So it's common for mostly the water seal goes first. Yep. And this gap that you can see in the top of the pump, yep. um, that is the whole way around the pump. So yep. if either the oil seal was to leak or the water seal was to leak, you would see an evident water or oil dripping from the bottom right and we didn't have that you've not got that no so unless it's broken leave it alone aye absolutely it's <laughs> so just... if it were to then that's what we yeah. do and do you replace it as a, a whole unit you can replace it as a whole unit or depending on how badly it's um it's failed you can rebuild them so there is seals and bearing kits for them yeah uh, general rule of thumb for myself is on an older engine if the shaft seal has worn away as opposed to the seal actually failing you're better off replacing the pump because the shaft itself is probably a couple of hundred quid on right, top oh, of right, the rebuild yeah. kit and your labour. Yeah. Um, whereas if it's just a lip seal, nine times out of ten you can get lucky by pulling the faceplate off, the impeller out and actually replacing the, the seal in yeah. situation. Yeah. So you don't need to start stripping pumps and putting them in presses etc. Et yeah. Which and is then, handy. Again, if it's not broken, if it's not leaking, then leave it alone. Exactly. Yeah. So from here it comes up and it goes into the block. Yep. which is cooled thermostatically. Now, what I was saying to you before is this engine came standard from the factory as a raw water only cooled engine, mm. but it has the fresh water cooling kit fitted, which basically which that? assumes that, well, it's this here. This is your, your water pump. So the feed out and the feed in for your water pump, yep. which circulates fresh water only is circulating the engine, which is great. Oh. Because beforehand, like I was saying, the cylinder heads corroding, etc. Yeah. Et it's normally because they've always got salt water running through them. And it's why this engine, I believe, is in such good condition. So how does it, t does it take the salt out or something? No, so the salt water on a standard salt water cooled engine literally blasts salt water around the engine, around the cylinder yeah. head and then dumps it out of the exhaust. So yeah, but this one isn't. This one isn't. This is fresh water cooled only, so it's separated. Where does it take? Oh, it's, it's so it's separated. still taking the water, sea water in. Exactly. But it's separating it itself. So the way it works is through a heat exchanger. Right. So a heat exchanger is bolted on to this block behind the alternator. You can't quite see it. Yeah. But there's one there. And yeah. Basically what it is, is a car radiator surrounded with a water jacket. Right. So you've got a freshwater closed loop cooling system going into this heat exchanger. The raw water is passing over that heat exchanger to yep. cool the fresh water. Okay. And then it's dumping it out of the exhaust. Where's the salt going? Where's, oh, so it's salt just, water, yeah, it, it's so salt water goes out. through it. The very last place the water goes is out your exhaust. So right. So this little feed pipe here is raw water going into the mixture elbow, which is why you get water out the back of your exhaust. Right, okay, so that's the yucky water going out the that's back. It. Yep. Yeah. So that's that is where it comes from. So and the nice water's not going through the and it, that is all that's going through. That's the all that's going through all that's all that's wow. really touching the engine is the exhaust and that's the salt water side of things where it dumps in its way out. So it keeps yeah. the engine obviously clean, it's not got salt water sitting in it for lengthy periods of yeah. time, which is what eventually kills that's them. That's probably saved this engine. That's why it's in such good condition for sure. But yeah. that that's a, it's a very expensive upgrade and it's time, believe it or not. And you're looking at three, three and a half grand for 
Yeah. That bolt on kit. Wow. And it's there, so you've got yourself a wee yeah. golden ticket for that one. And so the, the problem that we had was air in the system. Yes, I'll get to that. Okay, sorry. So while we're on the raw water side of things, things yeah. to look out for, problems that you may have. Um, impellers is the number one issue that you'll ever have an issue with, which is in here. It's the little water pump. Yeah. Are you familiar with an impeller? It's no, a little, I'm, I'm not, but David is, I know. It's a little rubber veined wheel, basically, which yeah. oh, sucks and yes. blows the water through this yeah. little pump. Um, if you have any problems before this on the suction side, Mm -hmm. and this is starved of water, it will burn out, it will oh, deteriorate, right. it will break up. But you think um, it's okay? No, your impeller is absolutely fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. First thing to but check. that's the first thing. Exactly, that, so yeah. if you were to check that, you'd put your seacock off, pull the plate off for four little bolts, have a quick peek and make sure the impeller is either okay or if it's minced. <laughs> um, if you're yeah. replacing it, what you want to check is that it's not lost any of its little rubber particles up. Oh, yeah, because then that's going to block, block everything it. and then that will be nasty as well. Nine times out of ten, they're collected in this pipe because it's an uphill run on these yeah. engines, which is great. So yes. sometimes when you pull this off and pull that so pipe off, they're all sitting in there. enough oomph to push it any exactly. further than exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. Because the pump's deteriorated, it's got nowhere to really send it. There's no pressure yeah. sending it anywhere. And then you can figure out why it's happened nine times out of ten. If it yeah. has happened, it'll yeah. be in black bags, believe it or not. It's quite a common one on the skin fitting on the oh. outside. Or nice. if your strainer basket's blocked or full of stuff. Yeah. And that'd be why that would happen. Yeah. So you'd want to clear all of that, new impeller in. What I quite like to do with any boat with a strainer basket on it is if you were to simply change your impeller and put your seat, uh, put this lid back on, start the engine up again, you've still got a lot of air in the system. Yeah. Which is really hard on a brand new impeller because if you think about how much water has got to come through all of these pipes, through the gearbox, yeah. up to the pump. Yeah. That's probably running dry for the best part of 30 seconds before water hits it. That takes yeah. quite a lot of wear. Yeah, I quite like to personally close the seacock yeah. and fill this up with water oh, to the so brim. It's, it's got much less time so to be running exactly. without so anything Exactly, so you've just taken all the air out of the system altogether. Yeah. Cap back on and as the engine starts, open up your seacock and mm. then away you go. You don't need to worry about putting any wear on your impeller. That's a really good tip, thank you. So. If for the raw water side of things, that's nice and simple. Let's go to your fuel then, just so yeah. we can talk about the issues as well. So fuel filter, very, very straightforward system here. You have a feed coming in. Yeah. Um, there's another feed coming out here, which I'm not sure is for. Have you got a diesel heater on board? Oh, we did have. Ah, okay. That's more um, than likely we, what we've that's We've still for. got the pipes, but not the actual unit. Yeah, there you go. So that's what that used to be feeding in that case. Oh, right. Okay. You then Good. have this um, feed out, which yes. comes up to this little guy here. Yeah. Your pump, which in turn fills up your primary fuel filter. Yeah. From your primary fuel filter, it comes down to your injection pumps. So because it's two cylinder, we've got two injection pumps down here. Yeah. Now, this banjo bolt here and this one way in the back were both slack, and I believe that to be where the air was coming from. Right. That's the feed to the injection pump. Yeah. And the reason I believe that is because we had nice clean fuel here. This bleed nipple. This is yeah. the first bleed nipple you'd come those to. Those are the ones he did, and we actually broke one of those. I see that's been replaced. <laughs> yep. I've yeah. been there myself. It's happened to everybody. <laughs> yeah. It's a bloody expensive place thing to replace as well. If you do knacker the thread well, in there, it's we, a bit of a We actually nightmare. just had to do the bolts. We did really well. That was lucky. That was very lucky. So from there, when I did try and bleed the system up, I got nothing but air through these <sighs> injection pipes to the injectors. So yeah. I quite like to crack them in various stages. If I'm bleeding the system, the first thing I'll do is bleed the filter. Yeah. Then I'll bleed it to the pump. Yeah. And then I'll take the pump fittings off, crank it over and make sure I get no air here. Yeah. And then once I know I've got fresh fuel at these two um, injection pumps, I will take the injector feeds off and crank again and got nothing but air through this system. Right, so so you had to work it back to, to be that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. from that point, um, another good tip if you are bleeding it to that extent yeah. is this is a decompression lever yes so if you dump that decompression lever and crank her over yeah it takes a lot of the speed or it gives you a lot more speed cranking the engine over so you're not going through compression cycles all the time right um i'm not sure if you heard that when i was bleeding up it probably sounded a bit different when i was cranking it over a little bit so the, yeah. the, that's that's basically for if you were to you could believe it or not have a an old school mechanical starting handle on these engines, oh, um, okay. so it wound in here yeah. and you can start this engine by hand. It is not fun. No. And you can break a wrist doing it. <laughs> so maybe not. But I wouldn't bother. It, yeah, no. your restart more is great and your batteries it's are good great too. To know. Exactly. So it's there if you ever need it. You never know. Um, the way you would do that is you would have this wound up the way. Yeah. You crank that over as fast as you can. <laughs> 
yeah. and dump that down and <laughs> hope it hits a compression stroke and fires it. A bit like running a car down a hill. Aye, exactly. <laughs> Except ten times harder. Yeah. And scary. Yes. Um, the freshwater side of things um, is basically an expansion tank. That's all you have. So you have antifreeze in this engine. There is a level on the inside of this. And is that? It's fine. Yep, fine. it's at the maximum mark. It's not easy to see, but you can. Oh, yeah, that's, yep, that's antifreeze that's in there. Water and yep. finger in there and, yeah. So you do have plenty of it. That's good. Um, next service you do, I would yeah. maybe recommend replacing that water. Um, okay. It should get done every three years. It should oh, be yeah. green. It's kind of clear. If it's not been done, look at it, getting that done in the next service as well. Yeah. Um, okay, that's a good tip. Electronically speaking, you've probably not had any issues with electrics on this, I'd imagine. Well, we have replaced the battery because we thought that okay. might have been one of the problems. Yep. Um, batteries are good again to change. We've got two year life expectancy on lead acid batteries now. Oh really? Yeah, which is pretty I think rubbish. one of them was 11 years. Well, you've done well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've done really well. The only problem I see with these guys electronically is if your batteries do go flat and you're cranking it over for a long while because sometimes they can be hard to start, yeah. especially in the winter, is it will flatten the battery slightly. The lower the voltage you have, the higher the ampage you get. Yeah. And you can blow fuses. Oh, right, okay. You have one fuse block on this engine and they put it in a very nice place for you. Oh, that's good. So, so that's, you, yeah, and and is it all, it's obviously all okay. It's fine, yeah, you have a crack but in... But we could perhaps get some spare fuses it, just in case. Yeah, it's maybe not a bad idea. Well, this, that's the benefit of this. So this is a yeah. four-way um, fuse block. So if oh. it did pop, you can take you your spade out and just move it on to the next one. That's clever. So if you're ever stuck, and the way you would know that is you'd turn the ignition on and you'd have absolutely nothing. It cuts power right. to absolutely everything. Okay. So that would be how you'd know. Yeah. And you come down, it's got a little clear window in it so you can actually visually inspect whether it has popped or not. Yeah. And if it has, unplug it, put it onto the next guy. Brilliant. Nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, we've got water in the bilge. Is that the shaft, perhaps? Down here. Winter? So if it's running down this way, which it doesn't look like it is, because they put these little collection traps in, Hmm. then yes, I would have said possibly the shaft. There was a little bit of diesel in here before, but I assume that's just been from the amount of times it's been bled recently. Possibly. August 19, maybe yeah. changing filters, that's we, where that came from. Of, David's in a lot of filters. If water isn't a bilge down there and there's yeah. nothing collecting up here, it's coming from here forwards. Right. So skin fit and seacocks, hoses, drains, you know, all of that kind of stuff I'd be checking. Yeah. Um, if there's nothing coming from back there, as I say, if there was anything coming back here, this would fill up first. Yeah, um, so it's not... Not the engine. So no, it's, it's, not, it's not the engine end. I would say have a look up forward if you are getting. I mean, how much water are you talking? It doesn't get much more than that. Okay. Um, but it would be nice to not have any. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then it's no boat, so hey. And another thing is, how do you know it's salt water? I'm not licking it. <laughs> so, top tip is give it a taste, but I don't fancy tasting that. No, stuff. that looks um, disgusting. Most boats, believe it or not, do get wet, they do collect water, depending on how much you get, if it's a lot, windows, hatches, yeah, all I this kind of stuff as well. We have got some water coming through that, one of the lockers, yep. so maybe it's coming down, yep. I don't know. Um, Alright, so nothing that... Yeah, another, another reason you get water in there is condensation in the inside of the hull as well. Um, okay. We've had guys spending hundreds of pounds chasing water leaks for yeah. it to be nothing but condensation inside of a hull collecting over time. Okay. Which is obviously just the temperature differential. The yeah. summers and winters and the nights and the, you know the temperatures yeah. can change here, yeah. it's wild. Yeah. Um, but if you're would getting it, a lot Would in it there. be something to do with um, the, the, the shafts down there, isn't it, to the, to the actual propeller? It is, yes. So you do have a shaft seal at the back there, but as I say, there seems to be dry. There's no sign of anything so gushing in there. the shaft needs doing? Um, it's a good service item. A, if it's not. Because there's a, a rubber thing. Yeah. If, yeah. if it's if it's never been checked, cleaned, I've changed, never, or never even seen it, as part never. of a service as well, so next time it's getting a service, get that done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But generally speaking, she is in very good condition. Another thing I've done, just for the video's sake, is yeah. the valve cleanses as well. Just check your valve cleanses. They were a little bit on the tight side. And what happens is uh, over time the valves will wear into the cylinder head. Yeah. And because you have rocker gear with clearances yeah. uh, pushing these valves, it gets tighter against the rocker and it gets to a stage where it will hold them open slightly when you're at operating right. temperature. Yeah. So it was that tight, I would say you've probably found that you've got another five horsepower on that engine now. Oh, right. <laughs> Which is why I was giving it some labour and gear on the pontoon there just to see yeah. how she felt and she's picking yeah. up perfect. That's brilliant. So right. you're good to go. There is a cold start sequence on these engines. I'm not sure if you know about. I don't. But... Um, so it's if 
you come to it, it's hard to start, which these engines, as I say, can be it's very mm. characteristic of them, that you, you would be cranking it for as long as 30 seconds sometimes, yeah. as um, you pull the stop. So with the stop all the way closed yeah. and full throttle engaged, seven yeah. seconds worth of cranking. Yeah. Stop it, push your stop back in, back to neutral, and then full throttle and start it again. Um, and what that does is it opens up the governor on the fuel pump um, and injects more fuel on a cold start sequence. So the next right. time you come to start so when, it, it, it when it fires, off. there's more fuel in there to exactly. give it more of an oomph exactly. to, to help it. Which sometimes gives you a very big puff of smoke as well. Okay. So, <laughs> so expect that. Aye. Yeah. But generally speaking, she's in great condition. Have a good season.